So now we're going to try plotting a world map with a new data set that has for the number of international students from each country. So first of all, we're going to need to use the ggmap package, which you may need to install. And we're going to load in the data set, which is called intlall.csv. So read csv, intlall.csv. And I'm going to do strings as factors equals false. Okay, let's look at this, the uh, the first few rows of international all. So you see that uh, each row corresponds to a country. There's a citizenship column that describes that's the country name, uh, the number of undergraduates, number of graduates, special undergraduates and graduates, exchange of visiting, and a total column. Now there's these NAs in here, but they're not really NAs, they're just zeros. So what we're going to do is say all these NAs should be zeros. So in international all, all entries that are NA, whoops, all entries that are NA should be zero. Okay, and let's look at the first few rows again. Okay, much better. Right, so next step is to load the world map. So let's call it world map equals map data world. We did something similar in the lecture with the state data. So let's look at the structure of the world map. So the first two columns of a longitude and, longitude and latitude third column is something called group. Uh, that's actually a group for each country. There's a different number for each country. Order, we'll get to that later. Region is just the country name. And subregion is sometimes used for some countries to describe like islands and um, other things like that. So uh, we want to shove the world map data frame and the international all data frame into one data frame so we can use it for ggplot. So let's uh, say world map is a merger, a merge of world map and international all. Now in world map, the country name is just called region, as you can see right here. And in international all, the country name is actually called citizenship. Okay, so let's look at the structure of world map just to make sure it makes sense. It looks good. Okay, so to plot a map, we use the uh, geom polygon geometry. So let's start off ggplot, world map, the aesthetic, x is the longitude, y is the latitude, group as in group the countries into their own individual polygons. Uh, we want to use geom polygon as a geometry. Uh, let's make it a... What countries will be filled in in white and their borders will be in black. Um, and we'll use a Mercator projection. There's a few other options in there as well. Okay, so that looks kind of like a world map. There's a few things going on here. So first of all, all the countries look like big black blobs. Uh, what on earth is going on, you might say? Well, sometimes the merge can reorder the data. And it turns out that what the world map data frame really is, is actually a list of latitude and longitude points that define the border of each country. So if we accidentally reorder the data frame, they no longer make any sense. And as it goes from point to point, the points might be on the other side of the country as it defines the polygon. So we have to reorder the data in the correct order. So this command is a little bit complicated looking, but when you break it down it's not so bad so we take a world map and we're going to just we're going to reorder it so world map we're going to reorder the rows 
we're going to order the rows based on, first of all, the group, which is pretty much equivalent to the country, and then the order variable, which is the correct order for the uh, border points. And we're going to take all the columns, of course. Done. So if we go and try plotting it again, so ggplot, I guess I should go up, up. There we go. Much easier. <laughs> right, so now we have the map, and it looks far more reasonable. OK, next problem. Some of the countries are missing. Now, of course, the USA is missing because MIT is in the USA, so that wouldn't be an international um, student can come from the USA. Um, and some parts of Africa are missing, presumably because there are no students at MIT right now who are from those countries. But you'll also notice that Russia is missing and a lot of countries near it, um, as well as China, which is definitely not true because I have many friends at MIT who are from Russia and China. So what do we do about that? The reason China is missing is that it has a different name in the MIT data frame than in the world map data frame. So when we merged them, it was dropped from the data set because it didn't match up. So to see what it's called in the MIT data frame, let's just do a table. There's a few ways to do this, but this is pretty easy. OK, so we get a list of all the names. And if we scroll all the way up, we'll see it says China, People's Republic of. Now, in the world map data frame, it is simply called China. So, what we can do is change the MIT data frame. So let's say the citizenship column, the one row where it equals China's People Republic of, should just be China. OK, let's check. If I do a table again, scroll all the way up, all the way up. There it is, China. So we've fixed that. So now the data frame for the MIT data frame, sorry, the MIT data frame is consistent with the world map data frame. So now we have to go through the merge again. Um, so let's say world map is a merge of a fresh copy of the map data, the international all data frame with China fixed. It's called region in the world map data, and it's called citizenship in the MIT data. All right, now we need, to do the, the, uh, we need to do the reordering again. So let's just up tap, uh, press up a few times until we find it. There it was. So there's the reordering command. OK, and we should be good to go now. So let's try plotting it. So ggplot, the world map data frame, the aesthetic, x is the longitude, y is the latitude. We need to group countries together so it doesn't all crisscross over the map. We're going to use geom polygon again. This time, though, let's actually fill them with a color that's proportional to the total number of students. We'll still outline them in black, though. And we'll use the Mercator projection. Much better. So Russia is missing for similar reasons, but we won't deal with that now because it's a little bit annoying. But you get the idea. Um, this is pretty interesting, actually. So we can see that uh, Canada and China and India supply a, a large number of international students to MIT. But it is a little bit confusing doing it on a per country basis because Europe presumably has quite a few students in, in MIT, but 
because Europe is made of many small countries, it doesn't look very impressive. Maybe if all the European countries are grouped together, it would look about the same color as Canada. But it's hard to tell. There are also other projections we can look at. So this is a Mercator projection. But what I want to show you is an orthographic projection that allows you to sort of view the map in 3D, like a globe. So let's try that out. ggplot world map aesthetics are the same. Whoops. Actually, let me do this the right way. I just press up. <laughs> okay, let's change it to orthographic projection and we'll define now an orientation and this is almost like thinking about where in the world you want to focus on so this is a latitude and longitude 20 degrees and 30 degrees if we run this we should get a map centered above North Africa um, this is quite a nice visualization because it, if you want to look just at Africa, this is and Europe, I guess this is the way to go. We can still see China and Canada and South America in there as well. Let's do something a little bit more personal. I want to change the coordinates now to negative 37 and 175. Now it's centered on my hometown of Auckland, New Zealand.